Hey folks, this is Christian. So in this video, I'm going to do a little review of what Unit 3 should be about. Now, Unit 3 asks you to redo the uh, Unit 2 assignment, which is the shopping cart that you did in JavaScript. Uh, this time, you're going to use jQuery to manipulate or refactor the code. Okay, so here is what I want you to do. Now, if you study the code and look at my notes, you should have, a, um, I hope, a good understanding of what jQuery is and how to use it, alright? So again, jQuery is just a library that you add into your page and it use that um, you know, uh, in parallel with uh, JavaScript. So jQuery is, um, is used to uh, basically manipulate the DOM. It has a really fast and efficient way to do that. Um, but you just want to be careful because there is a, a little difference between the two. Okay, I mean, I mean, like between jQuery and the uh, native JavaScript. So when you create something out of jQuery, you would, what you get is a jQuery object and not a a, a traditional or the um, uh, you know a vanilla JavaScript object. And I'll show what that means in a bit. Okay, so uh, you need to either download the jQuery library, which I showed you here. Uh, or uh, you can just you know use the CDN to do that as well. So let's go back to uh, the code here, and let me load my uh, Visual Studio. Okay, so here is the Unit Seven. I know I call it Unit Seven, but actually, I mean Assignment Seven is actually it's just Unit Two. So I'm gonna make a copy of this one here, so I don't mess up with my original one. Okay, so I'll make a copy, Control C, Control V, and I'll rename this to uh, something else. Uh, we'll just call this um, you know Cart underscore jQuery okay so now I'm going to go in here and uh, while it's doing that you need to go and get jQuery so I'm gonna go back to the browser over here and go to jQuery.org okay so if you go over here um, no jQuery it's a different site jQuery.com all right, so on the right side, just click download the latest version here. Uh, if you want to use the um, file here, you can just do a right click on this link and just say save link as, and it's going to download that for you. As you can see over here, you can save that to your file uh, and, and you, you put it there. So uh, that's one way, right? Another way is uh, you could just go and then uh, use the a CDN and a CDN. If you go to the very bottom of the page, way down here, uh, click on this link here, and it gives you the links to all these versions here. So again, I'm using the uncompressed version uh, because usually this is useful for debugging purposes. I mean, we're not going to modify anything in jQuery at all, so you can use any one. It's fine. But for me, I'm just going to use this one. Okay. So right click on this. No, actually, you can click on it. Click on it, and it will give you this link here. Uh, so you just basically copy this. You can just highlight and copy it or click this little blue icon here. It will copy to your clipboard automatically. And then now go back to your code way over here. So here's my copy. Uh, somehow it didn't let me do it, which is okay. I'll just keep a seven copy here, okay? So go to my cart right here, open that. And right above the J, uh, JS, cart JS here, make sure you put above the, you place it above that line, okay? It needs to load first before you script. And uh, somehow my page is not, um, it's not uh, um, uh, wrapping. I want to wrap my my code here. So I'm going to go to my terminal and let's see, go to my settings. Where is it at? Preferences, settings, and I'm going to change for wrap. So I'm going to do a wrap. Uh, what a wrap here. Um, turn it on. I think that's what I need. I need to also have the um, line. Yeah, that's fine. Font. I'm using I'm using like this very small font. I'm gonna make it kind of big. Okay, so I'll make it like a, you know, 18 or 22. I'll use 18 for all my fonts, so it's quite um, it's so it's easier to see. And uh, I think that should do it. Okay, so save Control S to save it. And now my code is a little bit bigger. And I'll add it here and now it's, it's wrapped. So I'm good to go. And then now I can save this and launch this on the browser. And so here we go. And there's the cart. Okay. So if I press F12 and load my console, 
I know it's working, right? Just make sure it works. If I check my application, check the uh, local storage here, just no uh, storage. If I save it, it's able to save that. It should work that, um, you know, save that for us. I'm gonna remove that. And, and I should be able to manipulate these um, uh, normally, okay? I, in my example, I did not put a title here and these are all default to zeros. But of course, we can change that anytime you want. Remove it. And then if you go to the console and type in the dollar sign, and if you see that it's a jQuery.fn for function.init, you have jQuery, okay? And that's one way. Another is just to type the word jQuery and then uh, lowercase j uppercase Q and if you see the function definition then you have jQuery okay so we're good to go in this part now let's go back to the code and then we're gonna do a few changes so we are pretty much done for this file we can close that um, and go back to the script and this is our JavaScript code right it's just the standard code here and so now with jQuery everywhere where you uh, manipulate the DOM, you target a particular element in the DOM, you need to change all of that to jQuery. So for example here, uh, this whole thing could also be written using jQuery, the jQuery ready function. Uh, okay, so you would do that as well. Um, I mean, I guess that's not too critical here, uh, but, so, but um, uh, so you can leave this as is, this line here. All right, so for example, this part this whole thing here can be rewritten or refactored using jQuery. Of course, jQuery cannot do everything here in, in, in the script. For example, you cannot create variables like this. So you have to use JavaScript together in jQuery. And because jQuery is just a library, it should be able to talk to the native script with no problem, okay? But not the other way around, all right? So uh, here is, uh, I'm going to refactor this code here to show you how it's done in jQuery. Okay, so let's put here uh, jQuery. Now, the first line here, just we're creating a variable called tbata, which is the object here, which is a global variable. We assign that uh, with the um, element of the tbata, the tag, uh, at the index of zero, of zero, which is the first, you know, tbata, right? Just in case we have, you know, multiple tbatas. So to do that, you can do something like this. Now, this is synonymous to the tbata up there, right? So tbata. And that equals to, uh, we put a dollar sign, and then in here is the elements, uh, the IDs and classes and tags and things like that. What if you put in this here? Uh, I mean, not, not the one, this one here and over here. These are the um, tags or CSS, uh, you know, uh, properties you can add into the jQuery function. So you treat this part exactly like you would do with CSS. Okay, so tbody is a tag. So you put tbody and then the index of zero. Now you cannot do this in jQuery. You cannot put T zero like, I mean, of zero like that, okay? It doesn't work because it's not a, um, uh, that's not, it's not how it's done. So if you want to reference a particular index, you have to use a special function called EQ. So dot EQ, and you pass to this function the index position, so it'll be zero. So this means that we are targeting the T body, which is the first one of the list. And this is synonymous to this one here. And just to show that it does work, I'm gonna change this to say T1, all right? And we'll, we'll also, also show that it does point to the same T body up here. So if I save this and load my browser up here, now it's already been loaded, so of course it should work, but we do anyway. So if I type in the T body one, as you can see here, it points to the same element as the T body, right? This is the T body here. So is, you see that it's a T jQuery function. It has some few stuff in here, but really all it does is it targets a T body at the index zero, as you can see, which is exactly what we want, right? One thing that you don't, you cannot do in jQuery is that T body one here is a jQuery object. That means it does not have um, all the uh, built-in uh, DOM element functions, DOM functions like the inner HTML, inner text, uh, things like that, all right? So I cannot do this. So tbody html. If I do that, I'm gonna get it undefined. Notice it does not point to anything at all. Normally, if you do something like this, it will return all the elements, all the the uh, content inside the T body, right? 
but this way you cannot. So uh, because t body one is a jQuery object, to get the element or the content in there, you have to call a function called HTML. So t body one dot HTML. If you pass nothing to it, you see that it returns the content in that t body, right? So you have to use a function called HTML. Now in the uh, in the other method, if you want to change the content inside the t body so you normally you would do something like this right so t body uh, one dot inner html equals something right if you do that like uh, you know uh, p paragraph tag whatever it is then it would change the content in there but because inner html is no longer a part a property of the t body one which is the jquery object you cannot do that so to make changes to the t body element you have to use the HTML function again. So tbody um, one dot HTML. If you pass nothing to it, it's a getter. If you pass something to that function, it's a setter. So here, if I put here high, you will see that it's going to replace the content with the word high because now I'm setting the content. I'm changing its its uh, uh, content. If you just leave it blank, then it's a retriever, it's a getter, okay? So that's the difference or the equivalent to any HTML and um, the HTML here. So that's uh, some differences already. I want to show you that. So let's reload this. Let's go back to the code. And so now I showed you that this is how you target that element. Compare this to this, all right? And then the reason why we put it into variable is because we're going to use this again, like down here, right? Use it in a couple of places. Um, like right here, so T body. So again, this will not work if I change this to T1. Okay, so you have to use the, um, the the function. But but let's go up here first. So so I'm going to replace this back to T body, and we got that line. So I can turn this off. The next thing is this save button here. Notice that I target the same button called ID save, and I save it to a button save, and then I call the event listener. And I um, invoke a click event, and I load this anonymous function to load the storage or add data to the local storage. Okay, so of course this is a um, this is part of J JavaScript, so you keep this as is. But these functions here can be written in jQuery. So these two lines can make it really short as follows. So I'll put some lines here. So then we, you can either use a, a variable or you don't have to because uh, we're not going to use this again. We only use it once in this code. So if that's the case, then you don't really need a variable. You can just target this save directly like following. So you can say dollar sign and save is an ID. So make sure you put a pound sign in front. And then that's it. This line is equivalent to this whole line here. Okay, I'm not going to assign two variables. I use that right away. And then the next thing is we're going to add an event. Oops, event here. The event is called click okay so this is synonymous to the following so you put a dot you're chaining a lot of methods in jQuery on on is the event on is equivalent to the event listener here okay so inside here it takes two parameters as well so we are going to issue a click event and then the second part is the function so you can copy this and put it right in here just like that so these two are uh, are the same. Okay, so these four lines, you can turn those off and put it into two three lines here, right? And it should work as as, as normal, right? Uh, only thing is that down here it's not going to work again because we are using any HTML. You'll see that, but um, I'm going to show you that on the browser what happens. So go back to the browser. You see some errors already. It says cannot set property HTML at 1808. If you click on that. It tells you exactly where these are because when we update these line totals, you know, uh, this this don't work because there's no line total here already because our book table is not created, okay? Because our code is incorrect. Okay, so let's go fix that first. And of course, you gotta fix everything to make it work, right? This is a global variable indeed. So that means you're gonna change that. Anywhere you use a T body, you have to use the correct version. Uh, so down here, tbody, I cannot do that. So I'm going to replace it with a jQuery version, tbody.html. And all I'm doing is just make it blank. 
Okay, so you have to put something here, so empty string, you reset that. Okay, where else do I use T body? So if you keep scrolling down, when we build the books here, right, we get all this TR, and then down here we have the T body in HTML. Again, this does not work. So instead of doing it that way, you can use the append function. Now, this is not a dumb function, although, although it, it is, but in jQuery has its own function as well and it treats the same way. So you can put that here. So you append every row to the t-body. Okay, so that'll work. Uh, where else do we use t-body? Um, I think that's all we use the t-body if, um, if I don't forget. Uh, if it is, it will tell us. I think that's all we, need, we use, okay? So let's go to the browser again and see what it looks like. As you can see, everything comes back normally. And uh, so, now, if I go to Applications and look at local storage, there's no local storage there. If I click Save, you see it works just fine. How do I know it works, uh, um, you know, uh, using the jQuery? You can remove that again, and you can go back to the code and turn it off. So way up here, when we save to the local storage, you can just turn that off like this. Now, you should not be able to save it, right, if it works. And of course, I expect that to work. So now, we can go and try to save it. As you can see, it's not working, right? I can add and, and remove and things like that. Um, but there's some problem here, anyway. Right? And I save it, and then, of course, it's not saved to the storage. Okay? So that's how I want you to do with this assignment. So that works fine. Now, the next thing is same thing. This part here, again, you can do using jQuery, all right? So these two lines can be rewritten. This in here can stay as is because these are just function calls, so you need them. But I want you to change this to using jQuery. So let me just go ahead and turn this off here and uh, um, do it this way. So you're going to say um, dollar pound and then new, right, on. And it's a click event and then the function, which is this part here. I'm going to copy this and put it right in here. Okay, so this one ends here and the, re the rest stays as is. So we basically replace two lines with one simple line. Okay, now one thing I wanted to show you also is that notice when you, like right here, I show here, it's fine. Oh, maybe up here. When you, um, you know, the event listener here, this part here, let me turn this back on. And. Um, Right, you can do it in a couple of ways, uh, or two ways rather. One is you add event listener function, or alternatively, you can do something like btn save dot on click, right, and then equal to this function right here. Okay, this is the same, has the same thing as same effect as this line here. Okay, I'm using event listener here. I'm just I go and use the unclick right away. The advantage here is that this function allows you to change these type of e events. Click, unclick, mouse over, mouse enter. You put into a variable and you change that. Here, you're pretty much locked into a click event. So you're very specific here, right? And then you assign that with a, a, a the, the callback function, which is the same one here, and you achieve the same result. All right, so this one here is not the same as this. To use this same here, you can do something like this in jQuery as well. So let me copy this and put it right here. And let me turn this off. Okay, so to use exactly like this one here, instead of say on, you put here, you put the event right in here. And then you, and then you remove the click event part, and then that's it. Okay, so now you're very specific to a click event. Uh, here, you're very specific to a click event. So if I turn this off, it should still work just fine. Okay, and uh, just to make sure it does work, you can go here and uh, save it. Go back to our local storage file. Okay, make sure it's clear, no, no local storage. Reload that page and save it. As you can see, it worked just fine, All right? So that's one way to do as well. So either way, it's fine. I'll leave this as is for now. So down here is the same thing. Uh, I'll do one more that I'll, I'll le let you do the rest. So this part here will be the same as is. Okay, there's no problem here. Uh, we did this already. Now let's do the update price here. Okay, so when we do update price again. 
This part we just you know reading data from a, a an array, so that's just pure JavaScript. Now these two lines here can be overwritten, can be refactored to jQuery. So again, we are targeting the unit price plus the ID. So that is the point. So you say dollar sign, um, the it's an ID, so pound sign, unit price, underscore, and then the ID. Okay, we target that already. Now I'm going to change the content using an HTML, right? So again, say HTML function, you pass in the price. That's it. So these two can go. And now we have updated this to using jQuery. So just to show that it does work, we update a unit price, it should work. Okay, so let's save that. Go to our page over here and reload. And so just make sure it does work. If I change this price to 2050, and you can see that it works just fine. Okay, uh, so that's how I want you to do with this assignment. You're going to refactor your code. Everywhere where you do a DOM manipulation, any of these that get element of ID, uh, um, in, in, in HTML, uh, you need to change that to using uh, jQuery. Okay, so uh, again, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. And thank you.